um, welcome um, Dr. Agard. Thank you, Marcia. <laughs> good evening, everyone. Good it's night. really good to be here. Yes, yes. We know we know it's a little late, but we were just w watching the um, the APP manifesto, and I'm so very excited um, to see it's you know presented in such a a wonderful way. You know, and and I, you know, I'm excited to see the younger parties. You know, to present something that's so crisp and 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 looks so good. And I can't wait to get in it and start to read um, some more. <laughs> that's true. That's true. And I'm so happy for that development because I believe that Barbadians are looking for practical solutions to our problems. We're not looking for any fluff. We're not looking for any pie in the sky promises. Barbadians are an aware people. We're well educated. And Barbadians want their government um, to enter them, enter into confidence with them and to let them know the truth. We can work together to find the necessary solutions. You know, so I'm happy that the APP has produced a manifesto of very practical solutions. They're exciting solutions. They're contemporary solutions. People are saying, yes, we want integrity and we don't just want integrity in name, but we want integrity. We want to pass the necessary legislation to ensure that public officials are held accountable because we know that we can be so progressive. Our development can be accelerated if there is integrity in the way we manage our affairs. So I'm, I'm happy that the APP manifesto has been launched today. And I encourage everyone to read it. Read it, see if there's anything in the manifesto that pleases you, that inspires you, that would encourage you to go out and vote for the APP candidate in your constitution. I believe that the duopoly between the Barbados Labour Party and the Democrat Labour Party has run its time. We've had people who are disaffected, people who are apathetic, people who are saying, I'm not going to vote because I voted for the Barbados Labour Party and I was disappointed. I voted for the Democratic Labour Party and I was disappointed, so I'm not going to vote. But to vote is your constitutional right. It allows you to participate in one of the most important exercises in your country. And therefore, we are happy that the APP offers an alternative to those people who are disaffected. And many of them, when you engage them, they say, well, yes, you know, the truth is, I really would like to vote, but I just wanted to have another option. And the APP has come and we are serving a very important um, purpose in allowing Barbadians to have another alternative, a fresh and inspiring alternative. So I'm happy that the manifesto has been launched. And, you know, I have to say that something that is very close to my heart is the ability of all Barbadians to be able to vote. Mm -hmm. And I feel very concerned about the position that we're in tonight, where it has been said that COVID positive individuals will not be allowed to vote. Um, I believe that we are doing them a disservice. People want to participate in electing their officials. They want to be. They want to participate in electing those who will not only represent them, but craft a future for the next five years for them. And the thing is that we have known of this pandemic since April of 2020. It's been almost 24 months. It was declared a pandemic, I believe it was, April. And so we knew at some point that we were going to face the issue of um, staging an election in the midst of a pandemic. We knew that. And I feel that we had a duty. We had an absolute duty to put the necessary legislation in place to facilitate those who would be afflicted during the period of election. And, you know, I go further because we are a member state of the Commonwealth. And in September of 2020, the Commonwealth Secretariat launched a paper to provide guidelines for member states to follow 
to provide the necessary legislation to make the necessary adjustments, to be as fair and free and as inclusive as possible. And I feel that Barbados in calling this early election, in as much as we call it an early election, Barbados had from April of 2020, or at worst from September of 2020, almost 15 months, we had as a nation, the opportunity to bring the necessary legislation to Parliament so that it could be debated and passed in the House of Assembly to ensure that any election that we stage would be as inclusive as possible. Mm -hmm. And we dropped the ball. We have dropped the ball and it concerns me, the silence in this entire development concerns me because it does not sit well with me that we have thousands of individuals who are going to be disenfranchised um, come Wednesday. And what concerns me even more is that not only will a COVID positive individual not be allowed to vote because they are in isolation, mm -hmm. but entire households will not be allowed to vote because there may be one or two COVID positive individuals in that household. So imagine that your spouse is COVID positive? Yes. You have been tested once. You have been tested twice. And you are negative on both occasions. You are a healthy individual. You are not a carrier of COVID. You are not infectious. You are not likely to contaminate anyone. And yet the government says to you, by association, by association, I will not allow you to vote. I will not allow you to leave that house and I will not provide any other accommodation to facilitate you. That is wrong. That is absolutely wrong. Barbados decided to take a decision not to follow any of the guidelines offered by the Commonwealth Secretariat. And had we done that, it would have been such a wonderful um, exercise because remember that this is our first election Mm -hmm. having attained the status of a republic. Mm -hmm. So we have transitioned in our maturity as a people. Mm -hmm. We have said that we have taken the final step in being truly independent, truly able to make our own decisions. And so this election should have been a celebrated election. There should, they should have been joy. And regardless of whoever won this election, we should have been happy. We should have felt included in making this important decision. And as it is today, we are not. I mm -hmm. cannot be silent on that. And I say it is wrong. I say it is a sham. I say it is not only unfortunate, but it is willful voter suppression. Mm -hmm. It is to be condemned and unapologetically and in the strongest terms, I want to condemn it. It is just not right. Hmm. Uh, but, you know, um, I, and I feel the sa very same way as you do. Um, in fact, um, there was another party on here tonight and they have filed an injunction. Um, I don't know. And that, that was done today, whether, you know, they, it will, we will have enough time. Um, but their concern was the thousands, um, you know, of, of persons, you know, citizens who would not be able to vote. And, and I want to, those who are watching, um, you know, I want to hear your thoughts on, you know, what, how do you feel about that? Do you think that this is voter suppression? Um, people not being able to vote. And as they're thinking about that, um, Dr. Agard, I want to uh, ask you, why do you think the government would not have followed the, the guidelines um, that were given to the, to the Caribbean? Because I'm, I've seen the article, I've seen, you know, Jamaica has done it, and I think Bahamas do. And, but, Bahamas, St. Lucia. Bahamas, St. Lucia, and, and Jamaica. So, what, 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 why do you think um, Barbados did not adhere to those guidelines? Honestly, it is perplexing. Barbados has prided itself in being a leader. We are always ready. Mm -hmm. And um, this has been our characterization since independence. Barbados has been a leader. They say that we punch above our weight class. We are always out front 
-hmm. in the preservation of democracy, in the preservation of human rights. We're always out front. Mm -hmm. And what I found really peculiar was that there was a survey done before the launch of the paper. Mm -hmm. I noticed that Trinidad and Tobago took part in the survey, Jamaica, Antigua and Barbuda, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Mm -hmm. And no Barbados. Mm -hmm. And I was stunned because I thought to myself, well, this is uncharacteristic. This is not like Barbados. But even if we fail to participate in the survey, the paper was published on the 28th of September. Mm -hmm. So we had 14 months to make the necessary adjustments to facilitate anybody who was COVID positive mm -hmm. during an election period. Now, with these two events, all that I can say is that I do not believe that this is an unfortunate incident. Mm -hmm. I see this as something that was willful. Mm -hmm. This did not just creep up on us. Mm -hmm. We knew we had an election to prepare for. Mm -hmm. We had the guidelines at our disposal. We opted not to do anything about it mm -hmm. and there are a lot of people who say but the ebc the ebc's hands are tied right now um there's nothing that the ebc could do this is what i will say to you the ebc as much as it is an independent body the ebc the electoral and boundaries commission still comes under the auspices so to speak of the prime minister's office they do that is a fact the commissioners are chosen three by the government and two by the opposition. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. therefore fall under a political directory. Mm -hmm. And I believe that if they had been given clear and precise instructions, find a way, they would have been duty bound to mm -hmm. find a way. Mm -hmm. We have we have set aside the argument is but we are under emergency management orders people who are covid positive have been ordered to isolate but you do know that we have set aside our directives for christmas and we set aside our directives for independence and we set aside our directives for new years and if it is that we could set aside our directives for those three events we could also set aside our directives for polling day. And we could have made the necessary preparations to allow all of our eligible electors to go and vote. Now, I have made a recommendation where I have said that we could, we could ask the members of the Defence Force to give us assistance in this matter. They are already assisting us in moving COVID positive individuals from their homes to isolation facilities and so forth. They are well versed in the management of COVID positive individuals. We could set up polling booths at Paragon. We could set up polling booths at Harrison's Point. There too are medical professionals and they are well versed in handling COVID positive individuals. So I'm not asking that you put anyone at risk. I'm saying let us use the people we already have who are familiar with managing COVID positive individuals. We could also have used young medical students because we do acknowledge that most of the individuals, most of the EBC officials on polling day are volunteers anyway. Mm -hmm. So we could have used all of our medical students. We could have asked them to volunteer. We could have asked our young doctors to volunteer. We could have asked our nursing students to volunteer. We have the dental fraternity. We could ask the dental nurses to volunteer. Take, for example, dental nurses. Every day in our clinics, we treat patients. We ask them to remove their mask. Dentistry must be the only industry mm. where individuals are asked to take their mask off. And we operate within 12 inches of all of our clients. But because we observe such strident protocols, we consider ourselves to be relatively safe. And I do not know of any incidents of COVID transmission between a patient and a dentist or dentist to patient because we are well versed in managing 
infection control. Mm -hmm. So it is not as though we do not have a steady flow of individuals who are well-versed in infection control. If the EBC had been so inclined from the time the election was called on December the 27th, mm -hmm. they could have put in place provisions for COVID positive patients to vote. And I am certain that the country would have been only too happy to partner with them in being as inclusive as possible. Mm -hmm. But from the beginning, they took the position that we're not going to accommodate these individuals. Mm -hmm. That saddens me because I don't see this as just an unfortunate incident. I see this as willful. I see it as willful. And that is why, in the strongest terms, I will always condemn it. Mm. I am not happy. It does not sit well with me. I yes. see it as a stain on our election, our very first election as a republic. And there is a stain. That yeah. is not the Barbados that I know, and it is not who I am as a Barbadian. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, this is, I'm sh here shaking my head and listening to you and getting, you know, um, even more information on the topic. I mean, just at a, a, a just gut level, I just felt that something was, um, this is, doesn't seem right. And to see that it was possible for the government to actually, Absolutely. in the same way, I mean, the, the directives were, were um, adjusted for the Republic as well. You know, and for Christmas, as you said, and for when we had the shopping day, you know, all, all these things that happened, uh, what, no, the Novak day, you know, lots of things happened in the holiday time. So mm -hmm. it could have very well have been relaxed um, for the for polling day. OK, so um, Dr. Dr. Agard, um, you know, um, listening to you, as I said, um, you know, um, actually, Ian Bartlett is here saying that it feels like malice intended. We don't know, but um, it, we have to ask the questions on, you know, on exactly on exactly why, and and wonder, you know, um, you know, how how it's going to affect people. I know persons who are, um, you know, uh, infected. And they're really concerned um, at this time. And it seems like it's about, it could be about which, anywhere between uh, 15 to probably 20,000 um, persons, citizens who would not be able to vote. Absolutely. This is a travesty taking place in our country. And it is taking place to the silence of those who should be speaking out. We should have the medical fraternity speaking out especially in defense of people who are not COVID positive, but who have been prohibited by association. Mm -hmm. We should also have the legal profession as a body giving some opinion on this matter. Because you see, Barbadians would be inclined to think, but I don't really think a COVID positive person should be allowed to vote. I mean, we have sick people in the hospital and sick people can't vote. Well, I hear that a mm -hmm. lot. So what, what are your thoughts on that? Well, the thing about it is that sick people have never been prohibited from voting before. People mm -hmm. at QEH have never been prohibited from voting. People at QEH, you could deliver a baby polling day in the morning. And if you feel strong enough, you could discharge yourself. And once you get to the polls by six o'clock, you can cast your vote. You could have surgery. And if you are brave enough, you could go and cast your vote. Mm -hmm. You could also discharge yourself if you are so inclined and mm -hmm. go and cast your vote. People at QEH who do not vote, do not vote by virtue of incapacitation. In other words, they're too weak. They're too ill. Okay. Okay, they might be, a, they might be hooked up to a drip, IV line, whatever, a catheter. So they do not vote by virtue of incapacitation. But there has never been a law that says an, an individual at QEH cannot vote. The same thing with the geriatric hospital. In fact, I will say to you that as a former, as a former parliamentary representative, as a former candidate who participated in an election, I know that we organize drivers on election day mm -hmm. to get out the vote, get out the vote. 
we make sure that our seniors are out. We make sure that our disabled are out. We make sure that the infirm that might be inclined to vote get out that vote. We arrange all kinds of transportation to make sure that these people are able to vote. Mm -hmm. So the argument that a person from the geriatric hospital cannot vote, that is incorrect. Because you could go if you are allowed, if they're allowed, you could go and you could get your relative and have that person vote. Now, a person in a psychiatric hospital cannot vote because there are certain prohibitions to voting. You cannot vote if you're incarcerated and you cannot vote if you are not of some mind. Mm -hmm. And that is part of the representation of the People's Act. Mm -hmm. So those are the areas where they have always been prohibition. Mm -hmm. However, however, there has never been prohibition of people at QEH. They may be incapacitated, but not prohibited. Prohibited, right. And I think that's and that's where we're seeing the difference here because I would hear see that on social media a lot, mm -hmm. saying, well, you know, what happened with the people at QH? And I think that the public needs to be educated. And I and I'm mm -hmm. thanking you, a dentist who's taking the time to do this. We should have the law of fraternity. Um, coming out to um, to to, ex to you know really educate the people and and I want to thank uh, Michelle Russell, um, one of the lawyers who you know who's trying to do that. And um, unfortunately, I know her and the, another lawyer. They were trying to um, you know to get an injunction and didn't get it in time. But the bar the there's uh, as I said the Barbados Sovereignty Party. They have mm -hmm. filed an injunction and we hope it's not it's not too late to allow these people um, to, to vote. Um, Dr. Veronica Evelyn is still with us and we just have another couple of minutes, about five more minutes on the program and I'm gonna just bring her back in the studio, um, Dr. Evelyn. Um, so do you have any thoughts on this particular um, issue? Do I have thoughts on this issue? Very much so, but I think Dr. Egerhard spoke for me. I would like to add though that this is our first election after being a, becoming a republic. We had a charter. We boasted on a charter. Yes, we, we say, okay, this charter is here. But look at this. Article 3 says, every Barbadian has a duty to participate in the economic, political, and social life of Barbados as an expression of active citizenship. Mm -hmm. Every Barbadian has the right to vote mm -hmm. and to run for public office in accordance with the laws of this country. And it is baffling, you know? I, I wrote an article, I said, it's a wearisome, worrisome election. It is very worrisome because here you have a government that deliberately and knowingly has not has failed to put in place the correct mechanisms so that persons can vote now we we, we are comparing it with persons in qeh who might be incapacitated and so on but it goes beyond that we're looking at numbers okay you have persons fortuitously okay they're in the hospital or they're wherever they're at and they can't come out to vote but now we have persons who are covid positive we have persons who are in isolation and we have persons who are quarantined and we have persons who by association can also can not go to vote so that if let's say we have over four thousand now Mm -hmm. If each of them comes from a household of three, and I can tell you that we have some households in Barbados that is much more than three. Mm -hmm. Three times four is 12. Mm -hmm. Barbados is a tiny country. How on earth? I think it was grossly irresponsible of the government. Grossly irresponsible and insensitive. Somebody said that it must be a malicious act. I don't think it was. I think that this snap election was a surprise even to the members of cabinet. I think it was a surprise even to the prime minister herself. It was not just a snap election. It was a swift 
snap election for some reason which only the Lord knows. And because it was a snap election, then they could not go with the guidelines by the Commonwealth Secretariat because they did not have enough time. That, that's my interpretation. I could be 100% wrong. But well, something does not compute. Something does not compute. And I, yesterday, my husband and I were talking about a voice that we used to hear in this country on matters like that. That voice has been silenced. Mm -hmm. You know, that legal voice, that voice of authority that was fair and just and that would have been standing up and saying, no, 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 people have a right to vote. I mean, you don't vote every week or every Correct. year. Absolutely. Once in five years. Well, we have been now doing it three and a half years. But how can you in good conscience not put mechanisms in place. As Dr. Agard said, there's Paragon. There, there are other, I mean, we have done some brilliant things. Why can't we be brilliant in this? Why can't we put aside this emergency mm -hmm. order for, for such an important and singular event? And I say singular because this is our first post-republic. We haven't been a republic for two months yet, you know. Mm -hmm. You mean this is the way that we're going? And we have a charter here that talks about justice and inclusiveness. And your first act is to take several thousand You can't vote. It does mm -hmm. not make sense. Mm -hmm. It does mm -hmm. not make sense. Wow. We're, we're on, I, we're I, Go ahead, Dr. Agard. If I, if I may interject. Why it does not make sense is that there will actually be more people disenfranchised who do not have COVID than those who do. Because we currently have about maybe 5,000, possibly 6,000 people. And as Dr. Veronica said, if you live in a house with a companion or two, they're also prohibited from voting. So you may have 6,000 individuals who are COVID positive but you may have 12,000 associates who are not COVID positive and still prohibited. Now, that is a very serious matter. And I noticed that the EBC chairman, if I may just very quickly read what he said today, he said that COVID positive 19 patients in isolation were prevented from voting on polling day solely because of the COVID-19 directive currently in force under the Emergency Management Act, which prohibits those persons from leaving isolation for any reason. And I note once again, the deliberate omission of their associates. In other words, I'm saying, don't even talk to me about the COVID-19 patients. Talk to me about their housemates who are COVID negative but who are still blocked from voting. You know, think about it this way. You have a little boy. Your little boy goes to school. He gets COVID from someone in school. He's five years old, but you're the parent. You're a healthy parent. The father is a healthy father, but the child, five years old, you cannot vote by association of having a COVID positive five year old child. We are disenfranchising healthy individuals. And in a small country like Barbados, if we find that there are between 15,000 to 25,000 individuals on polling day who have been disenfranchised and blocked from voting, they will constitute between 5 and 10% of our voting bloc. Do we feel comfortable knowing that 10% of Barbadians who were eligible to vote were blocked from voting, even though many of them might have been healthy? Can we honestly say that we have held free and fair elections, knowing that 10% of the electorate possibly wanting to vote, but not being able to vote? But I'm going to go further, and I'm going to be really brave about what I'm going to say. If we were to look at the demographics, of those who are afflicted by COVID, 
and those who are confined to their homes, we will find that middle-class Barbadians and upper-class Barbadians will not be as affected as much as ordinary Barbadians because upper and middle-class Barbadians tend to live maybe one person in a house, two or three people in a house. And that will be the extent of their dislocation. But think about an ordinary family where there are multiple generations of individuals in that house. You may have children, you have a mother and father, you have grandmother and grandfather, you may even have aunts and uncles. And in one house, you could easily have between eight and 12 people affected. I'm saying that the ordinary class or the poor class individuals will be disproportionately affected by this prohibition. We are going to find that marginalized people, people who are already marginalized, people who are already blocked out of participating in a lot of important cultural, financial, and business activities will again be blocked out of this very necessary exercise. That's a problem for me. That's a travesty. I, I, I am sitting here, you know, and I, you know, my, my, I'm just shaking my head and just, just trying to imagine myself being in that position. I'm, I'm trying everything, taking my vitamins and, 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 you know, doing everything because I want to make sure I'm the 19th I vote. You know, it's it's so important to me. You know that that this happens, and um, wow, this is this is. But Ian Ian Bartlett, um, you know, um, is saying I think they know that the majority of Barbados are against uh, against the, the dictatorship. So the strategy is to take the majority out of the vote, and that gives them a chance to to strategically win the election with with the purpose with this purposely created. And, um, you know, that's his, his view, um, his view on that.